Okay, welcome to our current session of the um, Mike Basman broadcast. And we're, we're continuing our investigation of Morphy's games um, because of what he can teach us. And now this time I'm going to show you a slightly different game that Morphy played, um, but it still fits in with our main theme. And my contention is you cannot learn from a game of chess unless you play it yourself. So that's why I'll be asking you the questions as to what moves you would play. And then you can develop your own skills. And of course, if you watch it on YouTube, you have the ability to pause when I make the questions. Uh, on this live podcast, we have to get moving. So I will have to interrupt your thoughts. Right, let's, uh, let's begin this game. Morphe is white. The game is played in Birmingham which is a big city, I believe, in England, uh, almost as big as London. And uh, it was played in 1858 in the, the home of one of the industrial powerhouses. Uh, in fact, it, there was a northern powerhouse in those days, and that was Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool. How times have changed. Now let's move on with this game. And we'll make the first move, Morphe is white, and he plays his pawn up to e4. Hooray. And I'm always happy when I succeed in using this computer. Little things, please, little mind. And black replies with e5, and Morphe hits him straight between the eyes, which is with the f4 king's gambit. Uh, this mighty move which is attempting uh, to get the rooks into action as well as the rest of the forces and also to attack the black center. So Morphe has thrown the gauntlet down and black has nobly accepted it by capturing the pawn. This is the king's gambit accepted. Morphe goes for the main line, which is knight to f3, which has the advantage of stopping Black's queen for moving to h4. Move that queen to h4. And if he does that in this position, he'll lose his queen because the knight will take it. So let's retract that move. Okay, make a more sensible move for black. O over the years, um, theory has congealed around black's most challenging move, which is surprising because you'd have thought black should make a developing move and just laugh at white's uh, pretensions. Um, they don't seem to work that well. So the black the move black plays is to support his pawn chain with g5. So we're going to go for question one. And I'd like you to just to think about what you would play for white in this position. So what would be your choice? white. So one of the good things about the king's gambit is you've got to make decisions straight away. Uh, you can't just fiddle around uh, moving your pieces and delaying the action. So here, uh, black is uh, defending his pawn chain. If you want to break up the pawn chain, you will have to do it now. So if you played h4, uh, that will give you four points for that. That's to break up the pawn chain. The reason being that black cannot solidify uh, his pawn chain by playing pawn h6, because white would be able to capture the pawn at g5. And lo and behold, if black myopically recaptures, then what is going to occur in this position. Yes, well done if you spotted the white could take the black rook on h8. This is a very important thing, a theme in breaking up pawn chains, and it occurs in the Queen's Gambit, which we may look at sometime. Um, but let's return to the position, and don't forget this 
the Duma is crucial to an understanding of the King's Gambit. So by playing h4, uh, white prevents black from solidifying his, his pawn at f4. Let's put this pawn back to here. So we give you four points for that. Um, you could also play a bishop to c4, maybe going into Muzio lines, bishop c4. Um, this unfortunately gives black the chance to develop his bishop to g7. That's, I think, the Hanstein. And now White's attempt to break up the pawn chain is less successful because Black has the ability to protect the pawn. And when we get this sequence of captures, whoops. Yep, lo and behold, the bishop is guarding the rook at h8. And then Black doesn't. Uh, have to lose his rook. So that's again, I, I've gone through this a few times because these fundamental concepts of the opening for most masters and grandmasters are so dead obvious they can't be bothered to teach you. But as a result, um, most beginners remain completely in the dark and even amateur players are completely in the dark about the openings because nobody explains uh, the obvious. Let's retreat to our position. Uh, whoops. Yep. Yep. So if black plays this bishop g7 move, white would have to go into the modified Muzio, which is a line which has been developed by me. But as I am uh, haven't played it much, I, I don't want to teach it to you in case it goes wrong. Um, so you'll have to wait till, um, till the next uh, CD comes out on, on this opening. Uh, so let's uh, uh, see what actually played in the game. Um, so I'm going to give you four points for bishop c4. I'm going to give you four points if you play d4 or knight c3. So those are the, those are the points I'm going to give. So your maximum at the moment would have been four. Now let's retreat and see what Morphe chose. Uh, Morphe went straight for the throat with the h4 move. And this, I think, is known as the Kieseritzky variation, named after the famous mid-19th century player Kieseritzky. So g4, breaking up the pawn chain, and therefore black has to move his pawn down, which he did, to attack the white knight. So that's uh, uh, the position in the game. And we stop now for question two. Uh, what move would you play in this position? Well, you've got uh, possibly three main moves. Uh, you could play the Algea variation, which is knight g5. It's not a bad line, though you would have to be prepared to sacrifice your knight at g5. Because uh, unfortunately, when white plays, black plays pawn to f6, the knight has nowhere to go. So white would have to... Um, a sacrifice and hope he gets something against Black's king. That's the Algea variation. We'll give you four points if you chose that. Um, retreat, retreat, retreat. Yep. Now, um, Morphe chose to put his knight onto e5, and that's the main line of the Kieseritzky. Um, but uh, also um, meriting attention is the famous, whoops, the famous Hertzfeld retreat, um, which I have popularized. Moving the knight back to g1, a really cunning move, because the knight, having lured the pawns forward, as you know, this is a constant theme of my chess play, you lure the opponent forward and he comes Unwilling, unwittingly to his doom. So the knight goes back to g1, but you see the black pawns having advanced down to g4 and f4 are ripe for the picking. Okay, so have a go at the Hertzfeld retreat. 
knight g1, but let's go on with the game. Oh, we better give some points. Four points for knight g1, four for knight g5, and six for Morphy's choice, which was... Oh, I, no, I've got to do something. No, I'm, I'm going to have to do something. Uh, otherwise, it won't let me go back. Yes. Yes. Okay, now we're happy. Right, so we're going to look at Morphe's move. And he plays knight to e5. Six points for that. So your maximum points at the moment would be ten. Uh, now, let's see what did black do in this position. He played his played his pawn to d6 yeah and white played knight takes on g4 uh, okay so very interesting position unusual position here what would you do for black in this position so this is going to be question three what's your choice for black Well, you might have chosen, oh, let's take the knight with the bishop. Yeah, bishop takes g4, dragging the white queen out, and then maybe hitting the queen again with knight to f6, kind of gaining a tempo. It's not quite so clear cut then, because the white queen takes the pawn on f4, and is uh, not pretty well placed, so... Maybe the scheme could have black backfired. For bishop takes g4, we're just going to give two points. Now let's retreat, uh, re retract our moves. Um, another thing you could have played, which I, I think might have been the best, would be to play the knight to f6. And uh, that gains tempo on the knight if white takes. Black can take back with the queen. And that has the advantage of protecting his pawn on f4. And that is black's asset in this position. He's, he's got the extra pawn. So I think knight f6 might well have been the best choice. We give, yes, six points for knight f6. But this was not what black played in the game. Black went for a more venal approach. Instead of this development, black uh, greedily went to take one of white's pawns. Oh, I think another possibility uh, is for black. Could he also have played knight c6? Yes, I think we should uh, give six points for that as well. Let's write that down so I don't forget. Okay. Now... Um, so, so black's move is really unpleasant move for white because he's playing his bishop to e7 and putting the question to white, yeah? Uh, not only am I going to get your pawn, but I'm also going to check your king. And that's going to put your king in difficulty. Right, so your Morphe, are you phased by black's move? Bishop e7, we'll give four points if you chose that move. Certainly an awkward one to me. So Morphe is now on the back foot. Its opening has gone sadly awry. Right. Now what did you choose here? Uh, if you played h5 to save your pawn, I think that's not really in the spirit of the game. Uh, we'll give you just two points for that. Um, you might have played, uh, what else could you play? Queen f3, yeah, queen f3, three points for queen f3. Um, Morphe um, just carries on with his plan. I mean, for Morphe, the whole point is to get your pieces out and checkmate the enemy king, and nothing is going to stand in his way. So here he goes. He plays d4. We'll give you six points if you chose that move. 
and that would put your total points up to 22. So he's willingly letting his pawn uh, go AWOL on h4, and black snatches it up. Bishop takes h4, check, triumphantly announcing check to the king. King doesn't want to move, <laughs> so he puts his knight back to f2, and now black deprives white of castling knights by taking the knight, and white has to take back with the king. So he's he's got his white's king has has been moved out to f2 in a more exposed position, um, but Morphy nonetheless prefers this. Uh, to decelerating his development. And in fact, in, in many ways, once he's got his king on f2, Morphy uh, has noticed that it's going to be easier to connect his rooks um, because, of course, the, it'll be easier to clear the back row. So let's see how Morphy turns a crippling disadvantage into an advantage. Meanwhile, because we're trying to understand the game, stop here and decide what would you play for black in this position. So choose your move for black. Well, it looks like in this position, the black has the better attacking position. And uh, we once again have doubts. Has, has Black has Morphy's opening backfired? Uh, there are obvious attacking moves. Like let's have a look at uh, Queen G5. Because you, you you're defending your pawn, you're trying to check on G3. Hmm? Um, I think in that situation, White could either move his queen to F3. Um, Let's say if he moves his queen to f3, and then, well, if, if black uh, if black checks with his queen on g3, white will just uh, take the queen off. Black takes back, and white takes the pawn. Um, don't forget that in the ending, the king is a fighting piece. Uh, because once the queens are off, um, the king is in less danger of checkmate. So uh, this position could be quite okay for white. Um, he'll need to develop, of course. But without the queens on the board, the black attack is not going to be so strong. So white should be uh, okay with a slightly better position here, if black tries that. Um, another move that white could play would just be to carry on developing with knight c3. And again, this check on g3, does it really destroy white? Black comes in again, all guns blazing, bishop to g4. Uh, white still has an adequate defense with bishop e2. And after this, probably, again, if black keeps attacking, he still can't quite get through. Uh -huh. Oops, I'm going to try and take that bishop. Yeah, but white still has just enough resources. Yeah. Black can now check with the queen, and maybe white could play queen f1. Again, in this position, we'd say that white would have the advantage with the isolated black pawns and the bishop and the better control of the center. So either queen f1 or possibly king h2. Okay, so... Morphy has got it all under control. The black attacks don't quite put him on the canvas. So let's say, so if you played queen g5, we'll give you um, four points. Queen f6, another four points. 
Now, one of the best moves might be knight c6. I give you six points for that. Knight c6. You can think, what's the point of that move? I can tell you what's the point. It's a defensive move. We're trying to get our king into safety on the queen side, us, him, us being black. Yeah. So black, maybe instead of thinking aggressively, should also think defensively. So knight c6, six points. Um, the move black played was probably one you would all have chosen, which is knight to f6. Very aggressive move because it threatens the pawn to take the pawn on e4 with check. And it threatens also to check on g4. So knight f6 also gets six points as an aggressive move. Though in this position, as I say, I might have chosen knight c6 or queen f6 to try and get my castle. <coughs> Same with queen g5, um, an attacking and a defensive move. Right, so knight f6 is white's move now. Morphe's got to choose. What would you do? Knight after knight f6. Well, Morphe decides to uh, keep his um, keep his pawn. So he plays his knight to c3, defending the pawn. He's going to allow. Um, Black to check on g4, in which case he'd put his king back on g1. And there's no obvious follow-up for black. I think you could play also bishop takes f4, just four for that, because black could then, let's see, let's look at this. So bishop takes f4 is also good, but maybe Morphy decides why give white the center pawn with check. We'll give four points also for queen f3 or bishop d3. So the maximum is six. So I think we've gone up to 34 points altogether. Let's look at, at the actual game. Trying to... Oops, could you... It's doing funny things. What did it do? Okay, okay, we're going to go back. Yeah. Okay, we're well, okay then. So, uh, let's look at Morphe's move. Knight to c3. Mm -hmm. And now, black plays his move. No, actually, let's see what, what did black actually play here. Play. Ah. Now black plays his queen to d7, putting pressure on your e pawn. Right, so what's going to happen now? This is going to be question seven. What are you going to play here for white? Well, you could decide to defend your pawn at e4 by playing bishop to d3, and that will get you four points. Um, also, a good move is to defend the pawn by playing the queen to f3. Um, though I can see there are disadvantages to that, because then black could actually play his knight to c6. Yeah, and then you're having trouble. Well, I suppose you can now defend your pawn with bishop to b5. But then it gets a bit messy after bishop d7. So black is getting his pieces out and uh, reconstructing his game. Uh, so queen f3 will give three points for bishop d3, four. Um, but again, after bishop d3, though, black again has knight to c6. I'll be attacking the, uh, the d4 pawn. Um, Morphy, however, 
Now, why isn't it letting me take that? Queen. Oh, oh, no, I can't do that. I can take it back. Yes, Morphy, however, has spotted a tactical idea. So instead of defending his pawn at, uh, at e4, he just whips off the pawn at f4, which is all again uh, part of his plan of development. So bishop takes f4, we get six points for that move. Bishop, whoops, bishop takes f4. So for the continuation of this game, we've got about halfway through, um, we come back uh, next Tuesday evening because we are slightly relocating next week, not on Wednesday. Uh, so at the moment we're up to 40 points max for this game. And now we're going to move over to the next stage of the, of the uh, talk, which is the live games against the world. Uh -huh. 2200 installed. What happened there? Game aborted, so we didn't get that game. Have we got another one? <laughs> Have we got a. What's this? This is. Oh, wait a minute. Am I black? And I'm playing Devil Alone. Yeah? Great. Well, I suppose I, <coughs> I'm always going to play the Creepy Crawly or the Grob, but I suppose I ought to. Um, here. I do have other openings, you know. <laughs> Not as strong, but effective enough, you know, like E6, you know, French and Sicilian. Alright, now this is one of the most challenging moves. Knight C3, and he's playing, he's just playing to support his center, yeah? Um, let's uh, see how he develops. Yep. Queen d2. My right. he's castled on the queen side. Right. Is that the problem for us? Probably. Uh, Okay. Well, at least we know where his king is, so we can try and attack king b1. Uh, let me try and get ominous on the queen side. d5 okay if i take pawn on d5 he takes my pawn on b5 so it looks like i've got to hit his knight first before i close things up and now if i could play pawn c5 hopefully well hopefully his is uh can't get his bishop to d4 to swap my bishop. Uh, his knight's not that happy on a4. Because he can't go into b6. Right, this guy is a savage. Right. Uh, okay, I think... Ah, oh, no, we don't want to do that. I just noticed. Um, poof. No, I think I will do that. Yes, I will do that. I was going to take back with the bishop to win his knight, and then I noticed knight b6 is going to fork me. So I'm still going to do this move, bishop d7, because I don't have to take back with my queen. Uh -huh. okay. I'll take back with the knight, which means he can't put in on b6. Now he's again playing the most aggressive moves possible. Um, whew. Hmm. Yep. What are we going to do? Um, or 
Well, maybe we can get a very strong outpost, but yeah, I think I think I probably going to take this. Yeah. Now he takes with the bishop. Right. I want to go. I could go knight e5. I think I probably going to play the knight. Knight to f6. He might get e5. Then knight h5. Yeah. Now this is the, this is not quite what I wanted because he's going to get his knight to that square uh, right but knight f6 he goes e5 and then I maybe I just take and he gets his knight into c5 then uh, so I don't want that happening I still think I've got to play knight f6. Yeah. Not what I wanted to do. Queen e2. That's a great move. Uh, no. Yeah. Can I play? Okay, let's play h5. Now he's played e4. I think I must take. Yep. Yeah. Take through the bishop. Take. He takes. Okay, I'm going to take. He takes. Yeah, I'm going to take. Right, he's still putting me under a lot of pressure, so I'm going to castle. Yeah, knight f3 is a rather good move. Has he got any threats though? Have I got any threats? <laughs> any... I think I'll play my rook. Let's see. Okay, I have a strong bishop and a weak king. His knight on a4 should have been weak, but it seems quite strong. This is killer blow. Knight h4, excellent move. Gonna get him to f5, isn't he? Uh, right. 
Identify with attacking my Okay, we're gonna have to bail out here. E2. Right. Okay, we better put the queen into. We put the queen into f4. Maybe place g3. I still think that I may have to do that. But I can't. What's, what's the time limit? Could take on a2. He goes knight f5. It's gonna go knight f5. Anyway, so I think we're going to have to do this anyway. Yeah. No. Get a bit of security here. The queen is too powerful. Queen to d3. Great move. Okay, we're going to hit him with something. Threat. Uh, can we play that then? Yeah, okay. Let's play B3. Maybe that wasn't the best. Okay. Let's save that. And he's just being pragmatical. Uh, we better be pragmatical as well. Now he's taking the queens. I better do the same. Knight f5. Another aggressive move. I think. Bishop has to protect herself. Mm -hmm. Don't mind me threatening his, his pawn on h2 and his pawn on b3. Because he has to defend the pawn on b3. Very unclear position. H four. Now I suppose he wants to play D six if I take on B three, but I think I've still got to do that. Take that.
e6 as expected. Okay. If I play e6, this is pawn to the queen. We shall see. to there. there go. Uh, well, I better do something quick. Okay. Let's, whoops. No. Don't want to do that. I'm going to play him back to here. Hmm. E3. Right. Maybe just oops, can't play that. I better play knight rook to d8. Yep. Uh -uh. Just notice something, which is unpleasant. Knight e7 check. Yeah, because he wants to get into c6. That's annoying. Do I have to take it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, what are we going to do? 97 check. Let me play. Okay, we're going to play the king. Try this check. Now we play the rook with a check. Uh, now we play the wall. This is not going well. We have to play the knight. Down here. 27 seconds. It's going. <laughs> He's got three minutes. Right. Not going too well. To be one good move. C2. Okay. down on time. One and a half seconds is not many. Seven. Oops, I think I lost. <laughs> right, good, good game by the opponent. Well played.
So who's this? Your wife. Yeah. Right. Agree. Okay. Let's try. Okay. Try the St. George. Yeah. Or the reverse to bang attack. Support that. And let's play Bishop B2. And let's go with F3, E3. What's the main line? This one, Knight D7. Okay, Knight C3. Standard position, and he's castled. Yeah. Um, now, a bit of pressure on his center. See what he does. Okay, play A5. Right. Let's just take that. Knight C5. Oops. Queen has got a move. She goes back to C2. into the center, but we'll make an exception. It's taken. We take as well. Think we should King's safety. Relative safety. Yep. Queen C seven. Right. Should just blot him out. We could. to be fine, okay, and I think we better centralize the rook.
C8. I expect to move. Now I can't really think of what to do here. Um, Positions are tricky. I think we could try some attack. Taking the bishop, good plan. Uh, shall we? Is he threatening anything? Yes. The last of the buff little folk. Ah, that's annoying. Or a skewer. So. Uh, has it all gone pear shaped? <laughs> now, we've got to find something to do here. Because we bishop. bishop there is a strong move, I think. This is all I can see at the moment. So good. Mm. Queen B six. Nice move. Uh, uh, Yeah, it's awkward. He's now threatening knight to b3, and my pawn on e3 doesn't look too happy. Uh, so I think we go into retreat. Yeah, I think we'll have to retreat. Not desirable, but maybe necessary. Bishop to a2. That was him too. Try to get another. Way two. Suppose we have to move the rook. To a1. <laughs> I think he's playing around with me. Right. 
should be a mate on G7. Maybe not. We can dream. Is it back to D5? Okay, which is then probably knight B3. This stops my B3. But doesn't stop my D4. Uh, my D4 is probably good here. But no. Yeah, my D4 looks okay. And he'll play that. No, it's got too many good moves coming. on time, we've got to make a decision here. Uh. <laughs> right. That's what the position is. Not very enjoyable, this position for white. Left now, I know we gotta do something. We have to do something. Strange move. Great, yeah, puts more pressure on my position. Uh, sweat, I'm sure. Uh, it looks like he has all the cards. Uh, has he got a sweat? that move. Worth a try. Okay. No, not that one. That one. <laughs> Might cause a bit of disruption here.
Yeah. Excellent shot. Cars. Uh, so she's pinning nice right yeah. Uh, I think that's how it's fit. Oops, I'm running out of time again. This is no good. Uh, this is simple word. If I can save that, I'll do that. Shush. <laughs> it's getting tricky. I'm not sure what I've got here. Uh, okay. Let's see where this thing is going. So. Okay. Yeah. We have to take that. Okay. semblance of an attack. Keep going, that was... Oops. Okay, there's a way to go. Well, we got to move to Skiza. Okay, me too. Whoa, <laughs> I think I won. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, one on time. That was so close. Oh, that, that was close. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>